welcome to the Bold Talk by Joe podcast, coming straight to you from the Valley of the Sun, Phoenix, Arizona, your society and culture podcast. And now, let's welcome your host, Joe. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the show. Hopefully, everybody's doing great. And uh, today's episode, I'm going to talk about finding balance. I know that those last few episodes that I've had, some of them have been about uh, how our how stressful it is and the the current state of depression that the United States is in, right? And uh, it affects everybody, especially if you if you know a person that's dealing with depression uh, around these times and uh, for whatever reason, whatever they're going through in life, right? And uh, so I want to talk about finding balance and stress. So this episode's dedicated, like I said, to to manage, to helping you manage stress and finding inner peace. That's what I'm going to be talking about today. So I put something together. I'm not a psychologist or an expert. This is just something that I, I thought it would be useful, useful episode for people with a lot of stress. Stress is something that we all experience in our daily lives. It can be various factors such as work pressure, financial concerns, relationship issues, or even the constant demands of technology. But the good news is that these are practical steps that we can take to reduce stress and regain control over lives. So the first step would be identifying the source of stress. So take a moment to reflect on the things that cause stress in your life. Is it your workload? Is it the long drives to work? Or perhaps a, a personal relationship? And by identifying the source, you can start to develop a plan to address it. Prioritize self-care. So it's essential to take care of ourselves physically, mentally, and emotionally. The episode before this was about solitude, right? And I talk about solitude, the importance of solitude. Incorporate activities that bring you joy and relaxation into your daily routine, whether it's uh, exercise, uh, meditation, yoga, reading, spending time with loved ones. Make self-care a non-negotiable part of your day. Practice time management. Feeling overwhelmed often stems from a lack of organization and abundance of responsibilities. We all go through that. Develop a system that works for you, whether it's using a planner, creating a to-do list, or setting reminders on your phone. By effectively managing your time, you'll reduce stress and increase productivity. I do this all the time myself. I plan everything. I'm a planner. I like to create lists. And uh, time is is very important to me. So I I do the best that I can to manage my time, even though sometimes I am uh, rushing to get some stuff done once in a while. But I think it's important to manage your time in order to reduce stress. Because if you're running late, or if you don't manage your time right, you get stressed out, right? Everybody goes through this. You also have to set boundaries. So learning to say no is, I believe, crucial in managing stress. Don't overcommit yourself and take on more than you can handle. You hear this all the time. Understand that it's okay to decline certain requests or delegate tasks to others. Setting boundaries will help you create a healthier work-life balance. And and that is one of the things that when you become a manager or you're in charge of people, it's something that you have to practice is your boundaries, right? You have to delegate and you have to try to make your, you can't take on everything because then what happens is when you start taking on everything, you get stressed out. You also have to develop coping mechanisms. Stress is inevitable, right? There has to be stress. But how we respond to it can make all the difference. So 
find healthy ways to cope with stress, such as uh, deep breathing exercises or practicing mindfulness or engaging in a hobby, something that, that brings you joy, right, that you can disconnect for a little bit. Experiment with different techniques until you find what's going to work for you, right? It's not everything, not, you know, deep breathing is not for everybody. Or having a, uh, practicing mindfulness is not for everybody, right? So you have to play with different things. You have to uh, experience different things so you can see what's going to work for you to help you release stress. And uh, one other important thing is seek, seek support. Don't be don't be afraid to to reach out for help when needed, whether it's talking to a frustrated friend, or, or I mean a, a trusted friend, or a family member, or seeking professional guidance from a therapist. Having someone to listen and provide support can be invaluable, and in also managing your stress. You also have to embrace a positive mindset. So our thoughts greatly influence how we perceive and handle stress. Practice gratitude and and focus on the positive aspects of your life. What do you have going for you, right? The the positive things. Replace the negative self-talk with affirmations and remind yourself that you're capable of overcoming the challenge or challenges, right? Never put yourself down. Never say that you can't do something. Always figure out a way. To replace all the negativity and try to make something positive out of it. Even though we all know how hard it is. How hard it is, right? But a little bit helps. Every little bit helps when you replace something negative. You're like, you know what? I'm being negative. I'm being negative. I'm going to be positive. And I can do this, right? And remind yourself that you can do it, right? That you can overcome this problem. Managing stress requires a what I call a holistic approach. By identifying the source of your stress, prioritizing self-care, practicing time management, setting boundaries, like I said, developing coping mechanisms, seeking support, talking to people, and embracing a positive mindset. And you can start to regain some control over your life and your balance, right, to to help you decrease the stress. Finding balance. That's what it's all about. Finding balance is is, is very hard, right? Finding balance is, is very hard for people. And uh, it's something that it takes it takes practice. You just can't be like, yeah, I found the balance. You know, it it takes practice to find to find balance in your life because we are we are so busy every day we there's just so much stuff going around us and uh finding the balance is 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 very very difficult uh sometimes and it it, this also you know stress also comes with a lot of other things too that i want to talk about not just the things that i just that i just said to you but also the health and, and your wellness, right? Because that could be really, really stressful, right? In our fast past lives, it's easy to neglect our well-being. So we often prioritize other responsibilities and we put our health on the back burner, right? We do it all the time. A lot of us do that shit all the time. However, finding the balance, like I said, in our physical, mental, and emotional well-being it's essential for it's essential for us. It's, you have to nourish your body, right? Pay attention to what you eat and the and what and fuel your body with with good stuff, right? And I don't know. Have some fruits, some vegetables, some protein, some whole grains in your diet, right? It's about the balance. Balance is the key. Balance is the key. Stay active. There's Nothing better than staying active, right? Engaging in regular physical activity not only improves our physical health, but also boosts our mental and emotional well-being. Finding activities that you enjoy, whether it's walking, jogging, dancing, whatever it is, for 30 minutes, 
30 minutes of exercise in, in a week or so, right? You have to stay active. It reduces your stress level a lot. One big thing also that I noticed, and, and myself too, is prioritize your sleep. Sleep is often underestimated, but yet it plays a huge role in our overall health. Establish a consistent sleep schedule and create a relaxing bedtime routine. I try to do that. I even have a watch that I use for hiking and all that kinds of stuff, but it, it's a Garmin watch, and uh, it tracks your sleep, right? It tells you how your sleep was, your sleep patterns, and uh, all that all that stuff, because I, I have sometimes a problem with when I go to sleep, right? I wake up too much in the middle of the night. So I try to have clean sheets, you know, wash them and clean uh, clean pillowcases. And I try to use uh, detergent that smells good and lavender and all that kinds of stuff, right? I try to have the room completely dark, you know, and like, you ensure your bedroom is conducive to quality sleep by, by keeping it, like I said, keeping it dark and quiet and, and like a comfortable temperature, right? I like to be cold, but at the same time, I like to have like a cover on cover one part of my leg, for instance, and that's that's what has me comfortable at night. You know, I practice practice stress management. Right, stress has, a, uh, like I've been saying, has a significant impact on our lives, on our health and well being. Incorporate stress reducing activities in your daily routine. And, uh, and you'll feel a lot better because stress, everything revolves around stress, everything, your relationships. So you try to, you want to do is cultivate positive relationships. You want to leave the negative relationships. You want to just not even deal with them. You want to surround yourself with supportive and uplifting individuals who who contributed positively, positively to your life, right? You don't want people talking shit. You don't want negative People around you always putting you down. You want to have people up. You want to have you want to have people lift you up, right? Nurture your relationships with your friends and your family, right? Seek that connection, social connections that bring you joy and laughter, and and also emotional support. It's like super important, right? Taking care of your mental health, right? so important everybody talks about it all my podcasting friends have a thing in the beginning of their show that i've added in some of my, on some of my shows that it's about your mental well-being right mental well-being is just as important as physical health when you practice self-care and engage in activities that bring you joy and relaxation and prioritize your mental health by seeking therapy or counseling if, if you need it right remember that seeking help is a sign of strength it's not a sign of weakness. You have to find time for yourselves. You have to. You have to find time for yourself. Like I said a bunch of times already, in our busy lives, it's crucial to carve out moments of self-reflection and self-care. Prioritize your me time to recharge and reconnect with yourself. That's very, very important, right? So hopefully this episode, uh, whoever's listening to it, hopefully this this helps you out uh, and, and you think about what I just said. Um, I would, I'm trying to get episodes like this out to promote uh, health because there's a lot of more, there's a lot more, uh, you know, things about depression and bad things that you read out there that is just, it just uh, it's affecting society in a whole, right? And uh, I want to one of the one of the reasons why I started why I wanted to do podcasting was there's a lot of podcasts out there that are you know they're a wild they're pretty cool they make you laugh and, and things like that but I wanted to do something good with the show also I also wanted to promote good stuff not just bad stuff not just crazy erratic conversations but also i wanted to promote good things right because i I have an opportunity i have a voice in podcasting and i have an opportunity to to do something good with it so if you know once in a while i have some good episodes that can 
that can uplift people and can help people out. That to me is uh, that to me is is very rewarding, right? That I can actually use something like this to uh, to talk and and try to assist people. And maybe by listening, sometimes you can read it all you want, but if you listen to somebody, it gets through you, right? And you're like, oh shit, I do need to find balance. I need to do self care. I need to work out. I need to do things. I need to practice this more. I need to find better acquaintances. I need to be more positive in my life. So sometimes listening to episodes like this gets you thinking about, holy crap, I need to do all this. And also for myself, right? Having episodes like this where I'm talking and I'm also listening to myself and I'm like, I need to practice some of these things myself too. It, it's never ending. You will never be perfect at it. You will never be perfect at it. It's all about working on yourself, working on all these things, right? To better your life, you know, to make it a little bit better, right? Instead of just having 100% full chaos all the damn time. So if you enjoyed this episode, make sure you subscribe to my podcast, leave me a review on 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 uh, what is it on uh, on iTunes or or Apple Podcast and Spotify and uh, I'm on YouTube. You go ahead and subscribe if you want. It will be great. And uh, stay tuned for more valuable insights and uh, more tips that I can come up with for finding balance and in and in, in living a healthy, fulfilling life. Until next time, take care of yourself. Peace. Thanks for checking out Bold Talk by Joe Podcast. We want to thank all our listeners and supporters around the world. You can listen to the show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube Podcasts. And don't forget to subscribe. You can follow us on Twitter at Bold Talk by Joe and on Instagram at Bold Talk by Joe.